Good morning. Welcome to Bethesda United Methodist Church. It's so good to see you all here today. Uh, to the folks who are looking in online, we welcome you. We hope that you are as blessed to, to be in the presence of a fellowship of believers as, as we are to, to have you here. Uh, guests and visitors, again, we're so glad that you're here today. Uh, just a few things. <clears throat> I have a, a, a card here from Alma Craver. It says, Dear Bethesda Church family, I want to thank you for the calls and the cards and most of all your prayers during my, my sickness. It meant a lot to me to know that someone was praying for me. May God bless you. Love in Christ, Alma Craver. And so, yeah, we're, we're thankful for that. So, uh, if you came in from whatever that direction is this morning, you noticed that Mulch Mountain is gone. Faith moved a mountain yesterday. And uh, so, we're, we're thankful for the, the, for the folks who were here yesterday to help, that make, help make that happen. And so... Uh, who knows, maybe that'll be another one of our fundraisers in the years to come. So, <laughs> I see Dan's over there shaking his head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we have that. Um, we have a worship committee meeting today at 4 o'clock. Um, a float committee uh, put-together meeting uh, tomorrow evening at um, Teresa and, and Keith Sink's home. Uh, that'll be at 5.30. So if you'd like to get your hands in on making the float, head on down to Teresa and Keith Sink's house tomorrow at 5.30. A finance meeting will be on Tuesday at 5 in the, uh, April 5th, excuse me, at 7 in the fellowship hall. So if you're on the finance committee, please uh, plan on being there. And the United Methodist Women uh, will meet on Tuesday, April the 12th at 10 a.m. <clears throat> so... Uh, we have all of that in there. Uh, if you'd still like to contribute candy for the welcome parade, the baskets are out there, so bring them on. Uh, and the theme baskets and the spaghetti meal, uh, the theme baskets are displayed out there in the common area. If you'd like to take a look at it, get you a ticket or two or, tell, or 12. Uh, they'd love to, to have that, a wonderful drawing for that. So, uh, and the prayer shawl, if you'd like to be a part of the prayer shawl ministry, if you think that you would like to find something to do, that would be a good ministry to get involved with. The prayer shawl ministry will meet on Thursday, April 7th at 10 a.m. in the church parlor. So, uh, that would be a, a wonderful thing if you'd like to show up for that. Are there other announcements? And let's pray together. Almighty God, we are so thankful for your love and your grace and the goodness that you have poured out on us in Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we come to worship you, I pray, Lord, that we would be a pleasing fragrance, a pleasing aroma that rises up into the throne room of heaven. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that all that we do would be a blessing unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. poured out a valuable essence, disregarding the scorn. Once the jar was broken and spilled out, the fragrance filled all the room, like a prisoner released from its shackles, like a spirit set free from the tomb. Lord, you are God's precious treasure, his beloved and his own perfect son.
sent here to show me the love of the Father. Out of love alone it was done. And though Jesus was perfect and holy, he gave up himself willingly. He spared no expense for my pardon. He was used up and poured out of for me, broken and spilled out, out of love. Thank you, Jesus. God's own precious treasure lavished on me. Lord, in such sweet abandon, may I be broken and spilled out and used up for thee. Won't you stand? As we come this morning to, uh, to worship, let us come into the throne room and let us give our praise to Him. Let us lift our, our praise to Him and let Him hear us. Let us bring an offering of worship and praise to our King as we sing this morning. It's 
it's only by your love and it's only through your mercy lord i come i bring an offering of worship to my king no one on earth deserves the praises that i sing jesus may you receive the honor that you're due offering to you the sun cannot compare to the glory of your love there is no shadow Father, as we come to worship you this morning, let us bring our offering of praise and worship. Let us lift you high. Let us block everything else out, else out in our mind. And let us focus our heart on you and open it and hear what you have for us today. In the holy and precious name of Jesus, we ask this. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. As we have gathered in the house of our Lord to praise and to worship, we also come to in a posture of prayer. And it is good and right. And I know that there are some folks out there wondering if I'm going to have a prayer of lament for the boys in royal blue. And no, it was a good game. They did their best. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> but let's bow in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for every blessing that you give us. We draw a breath, and may we give thanks for it. From you, Lord, comes life. And that life is is created within us, not because you have any self-centered desire, but because you love us. Your greatest gift to us, Lord, is love. Out of love we were created. Out of love, Lord, you hold us in your hand, even though we have sinned and fallen away from you. And we are thankful. And we pray, Lord, Continue to bless us in all that we do. Continue to bless us, Lord, even though we, we live in a fallen world, a world that sometimes is upside down. But we, may we always remember, Lord, that you've given us a mission as the church 
And that is to turn the world right side up. To show the world the ways of Jesus. To demonstrate for the world what Jesus would do in circumstances as these. That no matter what befalls us, no matter what becomes of us, we can say thank you, Lord, for what came before, what shaped us for today, and Lord, we know we can look forward to tomorrow. For through faith in Christ Jesus, we don't have to worry about tomorrow. So we're thankful. Lord, I pray for as many of the agencies around the world that are collecting for relief efforts for the Ukrainian people. I pray, Lord, that the world would search their hearts to minister to those millions of people who have been forced from their homes who have been forced from their homes to cross borders of foreign lands and to exist simply at the mercy of others. Lord, strengthen those agencies, empower those agencies, fill the warehouses of those agencies, provide the transportation that they need so that the goods would get to the destinations of those who will benefit from them. And Lord, we ask again for your spirit to work in the hearts and minds and souls of those persons that are inflicting this violence upon these people. Temper their attitudes, temper their hearts, Lord. Soften them. So that they may be instruments of your peace. May we all take a lesson as well from this, Lord. That warfare is not the way to pursue to pursue things. All it does is cost. And the world has seen the costs rise. So help us, Lord, to deal with this. Lord, be with the church in these days to come as we approach the passion of the Christ. May we never forget that the cross Jesus went to is mine, is ours. And yet Jesus gave himself completely so that we might be given a rebirth, a new life. So thank you, Lord that. May we always remember that. And as we come upon this the passion week and, and then the, the praise of resurrection I pray Lord that our hearts would be completely open and the true gift would completely fill us. Lord, we ask that you be with those who are suffering, those who are hurting, those who um, have a feelings of loneliness and despair. May each of them find strength. May each of them find hope for tomorrow to live their lives beyond the walls that confine them, that they may experience your freedom, your love, your grace. Lord, we all have unspoken prayers. 
And I give you thanks for unspoken prayers that are answered. Regardless of what the answer might be, yes, no, not yet, whatever. We do thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. We give you praise, Lord, for so much. And certainly, Lord, for not enough. Because you give us so much to be thankful for. We lift up to you Harry and Shirley Mullis. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for every great gift. And in the name of Jesus, may we all pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's wrong.
Amen. Amen. Won't you stand and let us sing the doxology. The children come up. Hey, come on. Here you go. All right. How do you know? How do you know if something is the best? Could you like it? Well, I like applesauce, but I don't think it's the best. I like ice cream better, right? What, if I were to give you a present what would be the best present I could give you? Um, a Lamborghini. A Lamborghini. Oh, <laughs> 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 wow. wow. You don't want to start at the top, do you? Okay, you would, a Lamborghini. This ruler costs 75 cents. I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> but if you were to look at this ruler, where would a Lamborghini be on the measurement? I don't think a Lamborghini would be on this ruler. That gift would be so amazing. I think we would need something bigger. A Lamborghini cost maybe $170,000. I don't think either one of those is enough to measure how good that would be. Maybe we need something bigger. Would you take this down there? Is that enough to measure how immense the Lamborghini might be? I, I think so. I, I think so. I don't think a little 12-inch ruler or a three-foot yardstick would measure it. But I think this tape measure, the 16-foot, would be sufficient to measure the bestness of the Lamborghini. Come on back. We'll put that tape measure right there because that's a good measure of that. Well, now, God gave us a gift. And I don't think we could measure God's gift with that ruler or with that yardstick. And I don't think that this tape measure could even measure the goodness of God's gift, the best gift ever given. Do you know what that best gift ever was? Jesus. Jesus. God gave us a gift. His name is Jesus. And we cannot imagine just how precious that gift to God was. God gave us the best when God gave us Jesus. And we should always remember that. Okay? God gave us the best. So that when we give a gift to God, should we give a little bitty gift? 
Should we give a, a, a medium-sized gift? Should we give the best gift we can give? The best gift we can give. That's right. That's exactly right. So you think about it. What's the best gift that you have to give to God? Jesus. No, not Jesus. We can give a gift to God. What gift do we give to God? Our hearts. We give our gift, our heart to God. That's the best gift that we could ever give, our hearts. Okay? I want you to think about that every day this week, about giving your heart the best gift you can give, your love to God. Okay? Will you pray with me? Lord, we know that sometimes we don't know what to get you because you have so much. But Lord, the greatest gift, the best gift that we could give to you would be our hearts. Be with these young people, Lord, and as they make decisions in their life regarding you and their faith, that they would give their hearts to Jesus, that they would give themselves completely to you. May they be broken and spilled out totally. Bless them and keep them in everything they do this week and wherever they go and whatever they do, may they know that you are there too. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks a lot. Don't slip on the ruler. Will you please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson? The gospel today is taken from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with Jesus. And then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to portray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, a keeper of the money bag. He used to help himself to what was put into it. And Jesus replied, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well as Jesus. Because of account of them, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And will you pray with me, please? Almighty God, we are so thankful for the gift of your word. I pray, Lord, that your spirit would be upon these words spoken, that those who hear would receive your truth. And I pray, Lord, that I would only be the instrument to deliver that truth in Jesus' name. Amen. While waiting for his flight at a busy airport, 
a man thought that it would be nice if he brought home a gift to his wife. And so he went into the store there. You know the stores that you see in airports, you know, you, the duty-free store, you, you buy them. And, you know, there, nothing, is, nothing is cheap at those stores. They're just extravagantly high in price. So he goes in and he looks around and he goes to a counter with perfumes and he, he speaks to the lady there. He says, I'm, I'm looking for a gift for my wife. Oh, and the lady, she, she reaches in and she pulls out a bottle of perfume. She opens it up. Oh, it smells lovely. And the man, well, how much is it? It's $100. Oh, no, that... That's a little bit beyond my means, the man said. So, oh, okay, no problem. So the, the clerk, she reaches in and pulls out just a smaller bottle. And she goes, well, this one is half. This one's just $50. No, it, it's, it's still a little too much. And she just looks at the guy and, and she puts the bottle back and then she pulls out an even smaller bottle. This one, the bottle's not as pretty. And she goes, well, we have this for, for $20. And the guy looks at it. He says, nah, have you got anything cheaper than that? <laughs> and the lady looks around and she goes, yes, we do. And she walks over to the next case and she picks up a mirror and she hands it to him. And he says, you're the cheapest thing we got. <laughs> uh, yeah. Even if the man had gotten the $100 perfume, I don't know that it would have been an adequate gift for his wife. Because it was not a gift from his heart. There can be a lot of stress around choosing and giving gifts. We look for just the right things. My daughters used to hate to go shopping with me at Christmas time because I was always waiting till Christmas Eve. And then I wanted to shop, compare prices. And Katie, my oldest, Dad, just get that one. Yeah, yeah, no. But anyway... It's, it's tough just to find that right gift. You ever try to buy a gift for someone who has everything? What do you get them? What do you get them? It's, it's, you know, am I spending too much or am I spending too little? Lamborghini. I don't know how you handle that. <laughs> you know, we begin to question ourselves. Are we seeking to surprise and delight or to satisfy the recipient? Or are we just giving something out of an obligation? And there's just as much stress at receiving a gift. I remember one year, I received, it was back when vests were popular. I got three of them. Oh, the first vest, oh, man, that's great. The second vest, oh, that's good. And the third vest, another vest. Oh, and I imagine the person who gave that third vest was going like, don't you love it? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's, it's receiving a gift is, is something, especially if we gift something so good, so wonderful, that we don't deserve. And we're going like, I don't deserve that. Take it back. I hope you could take the Lamborghini back. <clears throat> but, you know, it can be awkward. Receiving something that is so extravagant that we don't deserve it. Jesus received a gift that day. So extravagant. This woman, Mary, this is Mary of Bethany, not Mary Magdalene, okay? There's seven Marys in the New Testament. 
And sometimes I get confused. This is Mary, you know, Magdalene. No, not in John's gospel. It is not. Okay? This is Mary of Bethany. She takes out a measure of pure nard. Nard is, is a perfume that is harvested from uh, plants in the Himalayan mountains. And so it's imported. And on the market today, it would be roughly $10,000 worth. And Mary has taken this great gift and she pours it out onto Jesus' feet. Now, she doesn't take the dropper in the top of the bottle and just, you know, little dab here, little dab there, you know. No. She takes the entire bottle, the alabaster container, and she pours it out completely. And I can almost see, but the beauty of the moment doesn't allow me to see her taking and shaking the bottle to get every drop out of it. But I can imagine that she holds that bottle above Jesus' feet until the last drop pours out. And back in Jesus' day, women wore their hair up. The hair was the crown of the woman. And a woman would not be caught with her hair down in any type of public setting. Only in the presence of her husband would she let her hair down. But Mary bows down at Jesus' feet, pours out that ointment completely on Jesus' feet, and she undoes the crown of hair upon her head, and she uses it as a rag to wipe Jesus' feet. Mary has taken her crown and wiped the feet, the feet of the Prince of Peace. Jesus. She gave the best that she had to offer and she didn't hold anything back. She gave the perfume and she gave of herself completely. The perfume may have been the most precious materialistic thing she owned. She was saving it for a time of death to anoint a rotting body to give it a pleasant odor. But instead of waiting for that, she anointed Jesus the living that day, six days before Passover, one week. She took that precious ointment and she anointed the feet. She gave a precious gift to her Lord. And she poured it out completely. And she took the crown of her head, her hair, and she used it as a rag to wipe Jesus' feet. A most precious gift, yes. When we see things only by one point of view, we often miss the point. Because that perspective that we see it from in that one dimension is only our own perspective. I like to play golf, I like to watch golf, and I'm amazed at the pro golfers as they are, they're on the green, and I watch them, they walk around the entire green looking at the path of the ball. And, and let's just say they got a 20-foot putt, and they putt it, and the ball breaks this way about four feet, and gets about three feet from the hole, and it starts rolling back, and then in the hole. 
How do they do that? I get on a green, and I get behind my ball, I look, I get up, I putt, and I miss it by that far. And, and they're just dead aim. But because they're looking at it from different perspectives, different angles, they see the pitch of the green, the roll of the grain. They know where the ridge is, where the ball is going to break. They've studied it. They know it. They've looked at it from different perspectives. And therefore, when they get up there to make their putt, they are a lot closer than I am. They are a lot closer than most golfers are. When we look at a gift only from our perspective, only from our eyes, only from our expectations, we often miss the preciousness of the gift. Many times there's a fuller aspect to that gift. When we look at the gift that God gives us in Jesus, we have a gift that was born into this world in simple means, in a stable. A child of no power, a child of no stature, a child who was laid in a feed trough. Jesus, the Son of God, came into this world in a most humble way. Oh yeah, the angels in the heavens were announcing the, the birth of the Christ. Yes, everything was, the, 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 I'm amazed, the star stopped and shined down upon that stable so that the wise men could be led there. But you know, Jesus was born into a humble estate. The gift of God came into the world poor, human. No pomp, no circumstance, no parades. He was born of Mary and laid in a manger. The Prince of Peace. The Messiah. Now, if we only want to look at it from that one perspective, okay, that's it. And, that's it. and we can diminish that gift a lot. But God's love is amazing. God gave His best for us. God gave us an immeasurable gift. We can never begin to understand the fullness of that gift of God. But we know that that gift of God has a breadth beyond our comprehension. That has a length longer than we could even begin to walk that distance. A height that we cannot scale and a depth that we dare not go to. The gift of God is so precious, so wide, so broad, so deep, so wide that it is so wonderful that we cannot describe it in its wholeness. We can look at the gift of God, and if we only look at it from our perspective, okay, then, then we miss the fullness of it. Oh, there's the baby Jesus. The baby Jesus was born. Let's have Christmas. And if that's all it is to us, then we missed the point. Christ was not born so that we might have Christmas. Christ was born that we might have Easter. That we might experience the love of God in the resurrection. That the love of God is manifest for us in the death of Christ. The cross of Christ must be the center of our Christian faith. For without the cross, we have no Easter. Without the cross, the love of God is not fully poured out. 
Jesus didn't just drip out a little bit of blood here, a little bit of his body there. Jesus gave all he had, the fullness of his saving, the saving power of his blood was poured out completely for us on the cross. In Jesus' day, as in our day as well, life is in the blood. Without the blood, there is no life. Jesus has given us new life, an opportunity for rebirth in his blood. Absolutely. And if we miss that, if we miss who was born on that one evening, and if we miss who it was who died on the cross so that we might have Easter, the resurrection, then we've missed the point. We've not seen it from the proper perspectives. In Mary, this is Mary of Bethany, in Mary of Bethany's mind, in her heart, in her soul, in her actions, Jesus was worthy of every ounce, every drop of that perfume that she poured out. On his feet. And Jesus was worthy of every element of her servitude, even to letting down her hair and wiping the feet, the smelly, dirty feet of the Prince of Peace. The fullness of God's gift to us is the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of the gift of who is Jesus. We cannot measure it adequately, but we know it in his fullness. For Jesus did not spare anything when he went to the cross and he died. As a gift from God, we must see Jesus as God's most precious treasure, the song that Janice sang, broken and spilled out. The question is, will we be broken and spilled out to be the gift that the world needs so that Christ might be known in the world today. Broken and spilled out completely. Not a, not a little dab here, not a little drip there, but poured out, spilled out. Not as a group gift, why did Jesus die? He died for our sins. No, he died for my sins. He died for your sins. And if we don't own that gift, we can't claim that gift. Jesus died for me. And I'm thankful for that. We must see Jesus as God's most precious treasure. poured out for us, poured out out of love. Will we, as servants of the Lord Jesus, will we allow ourselves to be broken from our pride, to be broken from our sinful nature, to be broken by what separates us from God so that we might be spilled out and drawn closer, so that we might serve completely. I hope and I pray that we are. 
we can look at this table and we can see just what it meant for Jesus to be broken and spilled out. The Lord our God created us and breathed into us the breath of life. And yet we turned from God. But God did not turn from us. God promised to make a way that we might be redeemed as a people. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks to God and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he told them, take and eat. This is my body given for you, not in part. You're going to get a little piece of bread. I wish I could give you the whole loaf. But in this bread, you have the fullness of the gift of Jesus, his body, completely given for you. The Redeemer that God promised is the gift of Jesus. And after the supper, Jesus took a cup. And he gave thanks to God. And he gave this cup to his disciples. He says, take and drink, all of you. For this cup is a new cup of salvation poured out for you and for many in my blood. Poured out. Not dripped out. Poured out completely for you. Remember me, Jesus says, every time that you participate in the receiving of this cup, in the receiving of this bread. For it is the absolute gift of God and Jesus. Holy Spirit, pour out your presence upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. May they be for us the body of Christ which unites us together. Lord, may we all know that this gift is given to each one of us individually. But together we are united and we are strong. And we will stand and we will show the world the true love, the true gift that is ours in Christ Jesus. Bless these gifts and bless us all who receive in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Will the server please come up? I will serve for you the, the bread today. Uh, please take the bread uh, and consume the bread, and Gary will serve to you the cup. Uh, so as you get the cup, then uh, please uh, consume the cup and take the, the plastic vessel and drop it in one of the trash cans here. So. John and the praise band, if you would please come forward.
we have received the fullness of God's most precious gift. We have received the body and blood of our sacrificed Savior, Jesus. May we always, each one and every one of us, remember that He died for my sins. That He is the gift given for each and every one of us. Not so that we would be comfortable in our seats. Not so that we would de not desire to go out into the world and share the good news of the risen Christ with the world. But so that we would. For there is power in the blood. There is power in this gift Amen. that we have received. So let us go forth from here today. And it was suggested that we take our bulletins and we write our name on our bulletin and we give it to someone we know who doesn't go to church and we invite them, hey, come sit with my family next week in church. Let us be an open invitation for all who would come. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Won't you stand? Oh!